Hey, 42 here. In the 1970s, astronomers studying the leftover light from the birth of the universe, known as the cosmic microwave background, <gasps> discovered something remarkable. Our galaxy, and everything in it, including you, is hurtling through the universe at an astonishing 390 miles per second. That number is almost impossible to put into perspective, so let me just say this. Since you started watching this video, you have physically travelled more than 11,000 miles, and you thought you were a couch potato. Accurately measuring the speed of our galaxy for the first time was a big deal, but it was also a little bit scary, because nobody really knew exactly why the Milky Way was moving quite so quickly. A big chunk of our velocity could be explained by the expansion of the universe, which causes all astronomical objects to move at a rate described by something called the Hubble Flow. And some of the rest was accounted for by the interplay of gravity between the Milky Way and our nearest galactic neighbours, like Andromeda. But something was still missing. We appeared to be moving at a speed and in a direction that we just couldn't quite explain. It was almost as though our entire galaxy was being dragged off course by some vast, distant object. That was disconcerting, to say the least. But there was more. Because it turned out it wasn't just the Milky Way that was being pulled towards this mysterious, unseen object. It was everything. Every single galaxy in our little corner of the universe, around 100,000 of them, in a region spanning more than 500 million light years, is being pulled inexorably towards the same unknown thing. No longer just disconcerting, that was downright terrifying. Using powers of creativity that we can still only marvel at even today, astronomers decided to call the mysterious object the Great Attractor. But coming up with such an ingenious name was the easy part. The hard part was determining just what the hell it could possibly be. There's only one force in the universe capable of nudging entire galaxies off course over distances of hundreds of millions of light years. Love. Sorry, I've been listening to a lot of music lately. What I meant to say is gravity. Gravity is created by mass. The more mass an object has, the stronger the gravitational force it exerts. In order to attract 100,000 galaxies over a distance of hundreds of millions of light years, the Great Attractor has to be big. And when I say big, what I really mean is unimaginably, mind-bogglingly, rules of the universe breakingly colossal. The question is, what is it? And more importantly, what's going to happen to us when it finally reels us in? Let's start with the first question. We typically learn about distant objects in space by training our telescopes on them and having a good look around. But just to amp up the mystery even more, when astronomers first tried to probe the Great Attractor with their trusty telescopes, they quickly realised that wasn't going to work this time. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy, about 100,000 light years across, and its 100 billion or so stars are concentrated along a plane 1,000 light years thick. Unfortunately, whoever built this place seems to have left a lot of crap lying around. Because when we try to peer into deep space through the plane of our own galaxy, our view is almost entirely obscured by vast clouds of interstellar dust and gas. This section of the night sky that's occluded by the plane of the Milky Way is known as the Zone of Avoidance. And it obscures our view of about 10% of the universe. And you guessed it, the Great Attractor just so happens to lie smack bang in the middle of it. That's why, for several decades after the Great Attractor was first discovered, its true nature remained a total mystery to us. We could only study it indirectly by measuring its gravitational impact on the galaxies around it. It wasn't much to go on, but it did allow us to determine the Great Attractor's approximate location between 150 and 250 million light years away in the direction of the Norma constellation. And for the first time, we got a hint at its massive size. According to our current best estimates, the Great Attractor contains mass equivalent to 10 quadrillion suns. 
At the time, that number just didn't make any sense. Nothing in our universe is even close to being that size. As of today, the biggest single entity ever discovered is an ultra-massive black hole called Tun 618. And it's so absurdly enormous that part of me suspects those pesky astronomers might have just made it up for a laugh. This behemothic black hole is almost 250 billion miles across, and it powers a quasar that burns with the light of 140 trillion suns. It may well be the biggest thing that has ever or will ever exist in our universe. It is an awe-inspiring, terrifying nightmare of oblivion incarnate. And yet it's estimated to weigh in at just 66 billion solar masses. Not too shabby as far as black holes go, but still around 150,000 times less massive than the monstrosity that is the Great Attractor. Incidentally, scientists may recently have discovered an even bigger ultramassive black hole, Phoenix A, with around 100 billion solar masses, but there's still some debate about its true size. Anyway, whichever is larger, the question remains. If the biggest thing in the known universe is nowhere near massive enough to explain the gravitational effect of the Great Attractor, then what the hell can? This is usually the part of the video where I tell you that, for the time being, we have no idea. Except this time, we actually do. As I've already mentioned, it's almost impossible to directly study the Great Attractor using regular telescopes. That is to say, telescopes that gather light predominantly from the visible part of the spectrum. But visible wavelengths aren't the only ones available to us. And in the 40 or so years since the Great Attractor was first discovered, we've made huge leaps forward with both radio and infrared telescopes. With the help of these new technologies, we've finally been able to peer through the zone of avoidance to catch a few fleeting glimpses of the patch of sky that contains the mysterious and enormous Great Attractor for the very first time. So, what did we find there? The universe's most morbidly obese black hole? An intergalactic megastructure built by an advanced alien race? Kanye West's ego? Sadly not. What we actually found was more galaxies, like loads of them. Okay, so that might sound like a bit of an anticlimax. But seeing what lay beyond the zone of avoidance finally helped us to understand the true nature of the Great Attractor. And it wasn't all that we'd been expecting. But in order to explain what it was, we're going to have to go on a quick journey right back to the beginning of time. It's easy to think of the universe as entirely random, a swirling mass of 200 trillion galaxies just dotted around all over the place. But that isn't actually the case. In fact, the universe has a clearly defined large-scale structure that we call the cosmic web. Scientists still aren't completely sure why this structure exists, but the most common theory is that the very early universe wasn't entirely uniform. There were tiny fluctuations in the distribution of matter. The denser regions had more mass and therefore more gravitational potential, so they began to attract even more matter. Over billions of years, the mass-rich regions of the universe got richer, and the mass-poor regions got poorer. It was basically intergalactic capitalism. And through this process, slowly but surely, gravity shaped the universe we see today, pulling together grand structures and leaving behind nearly endless voids. The structures we see today follow a clear hierarchy. I'm simplifying a little, but broadly speaking, stars form galaxies, galaxies form galaxy groups and clusters, and galaxy groups and clusters band together to form superclusters. In our little corner of the universe, the hierarchy looks something like this. Our star is part of the Milky Way. The Milky Way is one of about 40 galaxies in what we call the local group. And the local group is one of about 100 galaxy groups and clusters that form the gargantuan Virgo supercluster. For a long time, we thought the Virgo supercluster represented the totality of our cosmological neighborhood. But we were wrong, because when we were finally able to glimpse what lay beyond the zone of avoidance, we realized that the Virgo supercluster, which contains about 45,000 individual galaxies, was just one branch of a much larger structure, the Laniakea Supercluster. 
At this point, we're so far outside the kind of scale the human brain can comprehend that the numbers become completely meaningless. But for the record, the Laniakea supercluster is about 520 million light years across, and it's home to around 100,000 galaxies. Basically, it's really bloody big. But here's the most important part. The mysterious great attractor can be found smack bang in the middle of it. Actually, that isn't entirely true. The Great Attractor isn't exactly in the Laniakea Supercluster. It is the Laniakea Supercluster. That's what we learned when we first saw beyond the Zone of Avoidance. The Great Attractor isn't a thing. It's a place. We're often told to think of space-time as being a bit like a trampoline. There's plenty of criticism about that analogy, but it'll work for our purposes here. Stick a heavy weight somewhere on the trampoline and the surface will be deformed, representing the curvature of space-time. The more massive the object, the deeper the deformation and the stronger the gravity. The Great Attractor is simply the deepest point on the trampoline in our corner of the universe. The gravitational locus sits at the heart of a vast cosmic structure that all surrounding galaxies are falling towards. Okay, so we're fairly sure we figured out what the Great Attractor is, but how about the second part of the question I posed at the start of this video? What's going to happen to us when we get there? Well, here's where things get a bit confusing. Uh, more confusing. The Great Attractor is located between 150 and 250 million light years away. But for the sake of simplicity, let's just call it 200. Travelling towards it at our current velocity of 390 miles per second, by my calculations, we should expect to arrive there in about 95 billion years. Except, we won't. In fact, we will never reach the Great Attractor. You see, the universe is expanding, and the rate of that expansion is increasing. We may be hurtling towards the centre of the Laniakea supercluster at breakneck speed, but thanks to the accelerating expansion of space-time, the distance we are from the Great Attractor will eventually begin to grow, even as our speed towards it increases. That's kind of confusing, so let me give you another analogy. Imagine two ants crawling towards each other on the surface of a balloon. If the balloon stays at a fixed volume, eventually the ants will meet and do a high-five or something. But if you start inflating that balloon, the distance between the ants will increase, blow the balloon up fast enough, and no matter how quickly those ants scurry towards one another, they will continue to get further apart. That's essentially what will happen with the Milky Way and the Laniakea supercluster. So sadly, our distant descendants will never get to high-five the Great Attractor. For those of you who are into existential dread, it's worth pointing out that the expansion of the universe won't just take us away from the Laniakea supercluster, it'll completely cut us off from everything. As of today, the observable universe is 93 billion light years across, and it contains an estimated 200 trillion galaxies. About 40 of those, the ones in the local group, are gravitationally bound to us. We're with them for the long haul. But thanks to the expansion of the universe, the rest will eventually begin to recede into the cold, dark reaches of space, at a rate faster than the speed of light, at least relative to us. And since nothing in the universe can travel faster than light, not only will no human ever explore those galaxies, no matter how long our species survives or how advanced it becomes, even the light from their stars won't be fast enough to reach us. And the grand cosmic web of the universe we know today will fade away to nothing. Thanks for watching! Just a quick word to say that I couldn't make these videos without the support of my Patreon members. Consider joining the exclusive 42 Discord community by supporting me on Patreon. It's a great place to discuss my videos with like-minded individuals and myself. The link's in the description, but if you don't want to, or you can't join my Patreon, then please don't worry. A simple like or comment to say thanks would also put a huge smile on my face. Thank you.